welcome to our channel for our kids we create knowledge that empowers our children so this is a slide on introduction to hindu calendar hindu calendar is the largest selling document year after year and yet it is not given any attention in indian education compare that with harry potter which had a world record of 12 crore sales hindu calendar makes a sale of 20 crore year after year the reason i am not comparing it with english calendar would be clear subsequently Hindu calendar is the only calendar in the world that calculates the position of the moon along the stars in the galaxy in advance for the whole year. Also, we have the position of the planetary objects like sun, moon, mercury, etc. especially in the South Indian calendars. So these are the planetary objects which represents Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. Now what makes such a deep technical book bought by an average village family Now as seen in this diagram we have a complex white colored object and as seen from different perspective different position it would appear like an M T or H for different people Same way the Hindu calendar is shown in such a way that the simple concepts can be used by a traditionalist astrologer or an astronomer Now what are the six key differences between Indian and Western calendar Now in Indian calendar we have different multiple point of reference like we have the year from Vikramaditya's time the year from Shalivana king's time called Shalivana shaka or the year from the Kerala king that is 1199 Now in Roman calendar we have a single point of reference that is based on Jesus Christ Now the name of the month can start in hindu calendar based upon the position of the moon with respect to the nakshatras that appears in the sky it is near to and in that case the name could be chaitra vaishakha jeshta ashada etc till phalgun or as shown in the second diagram depending upon where the earth is in its orbit around the sun the name of the month can be based on mesha vrushabha mithuna till meena depending upon the constellation where the sun is appearing in compare that with a roman calendar where the name of the month and number of dates in that month is based on whims of some king or politician for example julius caesar and augustus wanted the name of month based on their name and both of them wanted 31 days because they felt they were more important and thus we have less number of days in february we have a concept which is missing in roman calendar it's called lunar phase it's called shukla paksha or krishna paksha depending on whether the size of the moon is increasing night after night or it is decreasing or increasing we have a concept called nakshatra of a day the concept being missing there the point is the nakshatra or the asterism the group of stars where the moon appears in the night it's called the nakshatra the name of the year samvatsara it's depending upon the position of jupiter and saturn such a concept missing in roman calendar and especially in the south indian calendars the position of all the planets is calculated both in north india and south india there is a document called panchanga which is a detailed hindu calendar where these positions are calculated precisely now this concept is missing in roman calendar now what does bc and ad begin when we were children the name bc refers before christ and the name ad referred after death so the point of reference is birth of jesus christ now compare that with what we used to do in north india was that we the, the kids and the people used to write vikram samvat 2080 now what does that mean now assume that in 100 years a person becomes a father or a mother by between the age of 20 to 40 so that means that if we have several generations the average age between a child and its parent is 30 so therefore in 100 years we have three generations now when we write 2080 that means that the 63rd great grandparent of the person who writes 2080 especially the kids who are in north india 
that means that their 63rd grandparent supported king vikramaditya to fight adharma similarly a south indian kid who writes 1945 is basically saying that my 58th great grandparent supported king shalivahana to fight adharma similarly a kerala kid would say that my 34th great grandparent supported king kulashekharan to fight adharma now what is happening in our schools is that when we write 2023 we are saying someone else's that is a european or american children's 60th grandparent was living along christian mythological jesus christ now why i called christian mythological jesus christ is because when we are told that krishna is a mythological person we have in the lineage of krishna saying that like as you see in this diagram we have the lineage of krishna we have the school where krishna went that is sandipani school which is it's a sandipani ashram which is in madhya pradesh still it exists the syllabus that krishna studied that is 64 kalas and 14 vidyas that are still we are known that the classmates of krishna are known what how much days how was krishna's performance in school that is known so krishna completed the complete school syllabus in 64 days where others were taking several several years and the guru dakshina that he paid is also known similarly the original work of krishna which is basically the uddhav gita shrimad bhagavad gita both are available still today the language of the work that krishna communicated in is still present compared that with english english is a relatively recent language and any english document which is be before shakespeare including that of shakespeare is difficult to understand because english grammar was created much after william shakespeare's and other such documents were written now we have completed what is called the year now we have the masa masa means month now the first month in a lunar hindu cycle the north majority of hindu calendars have chaitra masa the meaning of chaitra is that technically the full moon is adorned near the chitra nakshatra so we have the vasanta season when the flowers are blooming the days are beautiful with smell of flowers especially on the full moon the moon could be near three asterisms three nakshatras one is hasta which appears like a hand on the top right it could be near chitra which is a very bright star and it could be near swati so if the full moon is in any of this region that specific month is vishakha the name of nakshatra is at least 18000 years old and why it is 18000 that uh, uh, we can refer in some other video so we have a concept called paksha which is the face of the moon now we are going to start chaitra navaratri so we have shukla phase and krishna phase shukla means the size of the moon is increasing so on 22nd march we have first that is pratipada pratipada is the first day of the moon in shukla paksha the size of the moon is so small and on that nakshatra if we see it is mentioned uttara bhadrapada so what is meaning is that the stars near the nakshatra moon is to uttara bhadrapada the size of the moon is made high for artistic purposes now how do we identify uttara bhadrapada so we have four bright stars in the sky forming a square and in that the two stars which is near the west direction is purva bhadrapada and the stars near the east direction is uttara bhadrapada the dvitiya on 23rd march the moon will be slightly bigger near a small nakshatra called revati tritiya third day the moon 24th march the moon will be near ashwini nakshatra as shown a small group of three stars like this chaturthi or the fourth on 25th march the moon is slightly bigger near bharani and bharani is three feeble stars panchami or the fifth the moon is slightly bigger near it's near kritika kritika is a group of six stars like this on 27th march the moon is slightly bigger again it's a shashti or sixth 
it is near rohini rohini is a group of five stars one of the star is very bright and it is v color in v shape then we have saptami the moon is almost half and the constellation a famous constellation very visible it's orion constellation it's called uh, mrugashirsha and uh, it is also called nataraja and in this there is a group of feeble three stars on the right side top as seen here this is the mrugashirsha ashtami the moon is further up now this is a very big constellation now as the moon goes further it is near a very bright star in this constellation called aridra so that region is aridra this is on 29th march and 30th march is a famous day it is the chaitra navami where the moon is slightly bigger than the half and it is near two nakshatras and these are called castor and pollux and in vedic terminology it is called punarvasu so this is a famous day called ram navami this is the birthday of bhagwan shri ram so similarly the every day there is a specific nakshatra written and if we look at the nakshatra near the moon that would be the specific nakshatra now some of the calendars also show the solar system specifically this is the kerala calendar and in that you see the top and the, on the top there are two squares and i have magnified the square for the month of march and there are some malayalam alphabets and for that the english corresponding alphabet is mentioned so we have 12 uh, such small squares on the periphery these are the various zodiac constellations now this particular picture shown in the calendar is basically representing the solar system and here we let us see how exactly it is now in this white square we can see sun mercury and saturn and similarly when we draw a red dotted line from earth till the constellation of kumbha or aquarius then we have three planetary objects the sun mercury and saturn similarly when we have a square on the top left that is the zodiac constellation of pisces or it's called mina and when we draw a line blue dotted line in this case we have the line passing through venus and jupiter so that is why in the calendar on the top left we have guru and shukra or jupiter and venus similarly the mars is in the constellation of taurus the chandra is in the constellation of mithuna or gemini now how did it happen in the time of rama's time so as we said on the chaitra navami it is rama's birthday so how do we know that because valmiki during rama's time when he had written valmiki ramayana he mentions tato yagye samapte tu ritu nam shat samatyayuhu tatascha dwadashe mase chaitre navami keti tho so that means that rama was born on the month of chaitra on 9th tithi specifically नक्षत्रे दिति दैवत्ये स्वोच्च संस्थेशु पंचसु ग्रहेशु कर्कटे लग्ने वाक्पता बिंदु नासह नक्षत्रे दिति दैवत्ये मीन्स नक्षत्रा वॉज द वन हूज डैटी वॉज अदिति और पुनर्वसु सो दैट वे वी नो दैट इट इज ऑन द नाइन्थ डे ऑफ द वैक्सिंग मून द साइज ऑफ द मून इज इंक्रीसिंग एंड इट इज नियर द टू नक्षत्रास हूज deity is aditi so that is this these are the castor and pollux or the punarvasu further he says in this swoch samsthesu panchasu so that means that five main planetary objects astronomical objects are in uchcha sthana which means that let us try to identify the solar system at the time of rama's birth as written by valmiki so when he says chaitra that means that if we draw a line between sun and the earth and take the line further it will be near chitra nakshatra and navamike tithu the moon will be slightly if the angle between the sun and moon will be slightly greater than 90 degrees then nakshatre diti daivatye specifically the line from earth to moon if we extend it it will be pointing towards two nakshatras in the zodiac which is castor and pollux or punarvasu so that way we know the position of earth 
moon and the sun using just two sentences of sanskrit then we say swacha samsteshu panchasu so this is a concept of uchcha sthana is present in both indian astrology as well as western astrology and both of them match sun in uchcha sthana means sun is in the constellation of mesha or aries so that way we are we have confirmed the position of earth sun and moon venus in uchcha sthana means venus is in meena or pisces so we identified the position of venus identified the position of mars in makara jupiter in karka saturn in tula and further it says graheshu karkate lagne so that way we exactly know what is the time of birth of shri ram so that means that from that point in the east direction was kark constellation and that means that it angle that is towards the sun is approximately 90 degree that means the sun is approximately above your head so that's why when we celebrate ram navmi on chaitra ram navmi we celebrate his birthday at afternoon time now does a common man need to understand all of this so as i have shown in this complex white object the answer is no for a common man he just needs to remember three names ram chaitra ram navmi and he knows when rama was born for a socially adept person he would know that all the friends who are born in punarvasu nakshatra would have traits similar to bhagwan shri ram for an astrologer he would know that it is a day good for conducting prabhu shri ram's puja or mantra aradhana for an astronomer he would see that the moon is slightly bigger than half moon because it is shukla navami and moon is six nakshatras before chitra therefore ram was born when moon was next to punarvasu nakshatra so that way encoding of personal family events your birthday sisters brothers friends parents etc if you can know the nakshatra so that will be helpful because you can have your birthday just like we celebrate rama's birthday krishna's birthday hanuman's birthday you can celebrate your birthday too and it is important for doing spiritual remedies puja etc now encoding of civilizational historic events like birth of rama sita hanuman etc is documented like this hanuman was born on chaitra purnima sita was born on vishakha navami such 600 plus astronomical events are just mentioned in valmiki ramayana that means that hindu calendar has had a common thread from the time of ramayana so not only is hindu calendar the largest selling document but it is also a largest living document that is calculated year after year after year from the time at least from the time from bhagwan ram now why not celebrate your birthday like rama krishna etc on the nakshatra and based on your local hindu month why not write your year based on your the year your great grandparents fought adharma and other thing is when you are celebrating your birthday based on nakshatra and if you offers flowers at the local temple monthly once on the your nakshatra it is going to immensely benefit you in solving your problems so why not use hindu calendar so with that we end our session we hope that we will be able to create more of such knowledgeable sessions which i believe that you would enjoy